Hey, welcome to Wine Up TV. We're back again today with my guest, Wayne Twist. Oh, I'm the guest. But anyways, it's great to be back with Wayne. We'll be back to talk about wine. Good to be here, Wayne. Thank you. Congratulations. I heard you got fired, but that's congratulations. I, I got fired that. from one company because I have my own, and this is our, our first interview. Dude, yeah, you, he, you, Tim started his own wine distributor company, and it's phenomenal. He's brought on a lot of these smaller players here in the Willamette Valley, and he's going to build his little book very well. It's very thought out. A couple weeks ago, he stopped by, gave me one piece of paper, so here's, here's what I got so far. Today, he, he goes, man, I can't afford staples. He gave me five pages, so... Uh, congratulations, I can't man. afford staples as it goes. And there's going to be classes later how to start your own wine distribution company. <laughs> That's coming later on Wine Up TV. We'll YouTube, but right? for today, I want to talk to you about some awesome wines. We're up to 13 wineries. OregonWineSales.com is the website. has links to all of these websites uh, for you to look into them from uh, your home computer when you're done watching this video. The first wine we're starting with is from Lundin Cellars out in McMinnville. This is made at Walnut City Wine Works, which is basically in McMinnville proper there. Uh, it's produced by Michael Lundeen. Uh, Michael uh, started back at Willa Kenzie and uh, was the winemaker for the first two vintages of Illahee uh, Vineyards. Illahee makes great wine, by the way. And, uh, and great, great stuff since the beginning. I was buying at my shop in Eugene when I had it and uh, fell in love with Michael's uh, Genius Loki label. And so I wrote a proposal to Michael. We met. And um, so he's still sourcing fruit from Illahi, uh, and he's got his own vineyard uh, right outside of McMinnville also. Uh, so it's Lundin uh, Cellars and Genus Loki Wines. Genus Loki means of the place. So the Genus Loki label itself is going to be focusing on single vineyard varieties. Uh, the Gris that I'm showing you today sees seven months neutral barrel. So this, I, I don't go crazy for Pinot Gris. Neither do I. This got this little coconut, lemon, it's, it's got a real almost like a uh, butterscotch nose on it. I love it. There's I'm some really high, high tone fruit profile on it, some pear. I love this. Uh, lots of caramel. And this is a Pinot Gris. Five days later, it's developed even more. It gets a little cloudy, a little oxidative, but you get these candied elements like candied pear, almost pineapple to it. So that's what the oak does. And also it affects the mouthfeel. So you get this really silky, uh, higher gravity density in the mouthfeel. So it's a little more viscous. Um, I, I sat there and I go, Michael, this is my favorite Pinot Gris. And I don't like Pinot Gris unless it's Alsatian. Generally, my favorite since uh, Siltstone's 06 Guadalupe. And he laughed. He goes, that was made here at Walnut City Wine Works. Wow. There you go. So irony. But anyways, absolutely beautiful stuff. And this retails, retail. we said about 13 bucks on the retail well, for this Napa. stuff. Guys, you know what? It's great. And I'll tell you, when I lived down in Napa, uh, right next to Mustard's, was, it, it's still, I think, Costantino Winery. And Mitch put a Gewürztraminer in barrel for about a year, maybe not even a year. But that Gewürztraminer, when I had it, it blew me away. And this was back in 95, 96. And it was so creamy and just the, the, so completely not like a Gewürz. This is so completely not like a Pinot Gris. It's got that nice mouthfeel. Usually Pinot Gris have a little bit more acidity. Um, they're going to have the, uh, a little bit more apple and pear, just a big crispness to it. And this has really nice and round and rich. I love this stuff. Um, a lot of times Pinot Gris can be like white on white, and this is just not that at all. Lots of characteristics. So um, try, try a Pinot Gris again if you're not a Pinot Gris fan. Wine number two. Oh, I love these guys. And Nam Kara. This is one of my stops on my wine tour, guys. Um, not only do they make great wine, but she and Nick are just great peeps. And you'll find Nick out in the vineyard where he's comfortable at home on his track, and you'll find Sheila in the tasting room all the time. Uh, what, what do we have here? So Anamkara is 08 Selection Pinot. Oh, this good. is the first screw cap for Anamkara, uh, and this is all vineyard fruit. All vineyard fruit in this. Uh, Vadensville, Dijon, 115 and 114 clones. This wine sees 19% new oak, 69% neutral, and uh, the rest is second generation. If I talk about that too fast, uh, look at our website, OregonWineSales.com, link to Anamkara. Check out all the technical information is under their listed wines. Um, this, I love the nose on this. Just really, it's oak. I, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, of a little newer oak. And, and that 20% new oak delivers. It out. 
I mean, it's got, it's got that caramely red fruit, layer after layer of flavor. And again, the viscosity in the mouth is just really nice and, uh, and kind of oily, textured fruit. Um, Anamkara, we're coming up on Valentine's Day too. Anamkara is Celtic for friend of the soul. So a really deep, rich, list. integrated light. You know you are, baby. Oh, baby I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so great, great for the holiday. And uh, they make uh, the Nicholas Estate. Uh, Pinot Noir, they do a Heathers, which is kind of a more feminine uh, version. They do a Mark's version for their, their daughter and son, which is a little more masculine style. The they don't make a lot of wine. You know, they're, they don't. They're not a huge grower. I want to say big grower. They've got about 30 acres. And they sell most of their fruit, but they reserve a little bit of it back so they can build their own brand. And I think they've done it. I think they're doing a really good job of doing it. I think they're, st they're, they're starting to sell less and less and keeping more and more as they build a brand slowly. And that's very important these days. You have to make great wine, and you have to have it at really good prices. And what's the retail on this bottle? So you're looking at about 20... Um, Trying to do the math in my head. 24 on the retail, because I always think on the, the salesman right side. I'll let you know if I had it before <clears> the show. So uh, anyways, the Alkalades speak for themselves, and they got great scores across the board. But not just great scores, but vintage to vintage, the scores are great. All single vineyard, same, same guy in the tractor every year, just all in the hands of the family. This is what I'm all about, micro producers, small producers that we like to support. I don't want to dump this I'm out. I'm drinking it. Makes it easier to sell wine after you've had a glass or two. Absolutely. Don't tell the OLCC <laughs> that. <laughs> who? No, I don't know, I don't know who goes there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got here? Check out this label, everybody. So, absolutely in love Gone with this couple. King Slave. I've actually been called <clears throat> all three of those. Yeah, I well, I mean, night. this is kind of maybe something you want to jump on for Valentine's Day. Again, a little S&M kind of Valentine's Absolutely. Day, perhaps. Long story short. Anyways, short's long story short, going to go away. Gog King Slave will be the focus. These are the youngest winemakers in Southern Oregon. Uh, Chris Jardine is assistant winemaker at Folan uh, Vineyard. So this is all Folan Estate fruit. Uh, Christine Collier, his partner, uh, is the sales manager at Truen in Southern Oregon. So these two got together, came up with this. And I love it because... They're doing the winemaking just fabulously. They're d getting the write-ups. Catherine Cole just wrote them up last week in Oregon Live. Um, and they're doing the branding, which, you know, God help me. I'm out selling the wine. Put a beautiful package together, and they've done it. Uh, and this comes from Constantine Brachis's, uh quote, create like a god, command like a king, work like a slave. And that's what you do to make it happen. You own your own company, 90, too. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you work like a slave. 96 <laughs> cases of this produced for its inaugural Four vintage. Barrels. Um, and we will have uh, more June, July once the bottling and settling uh, works out. There will also be a New Zealand style Sauvignon Blanc, real high acid, laser beam I fruit. I like this, 50 temp, 50 <clears throat> Syrah. It's, it's got a nice caramely note, again. And you know, Tempranillo blending in with Syrah. Um, Southern Oregon is coming up with all these really unique, interesting blends. And um, I think this is great. Well, they're the only ones down there doing the Tempranillo Syrah blend A. And it's a little different approach. People do the Rhone blends. People do Spanish style. This is northern Spain meets southern France. Um, and when I wrote the proposal to these two, uh, I wrote it at 9.30 one morning, was sitting down with them two hours later in South Salem talking through it and uh, finding out we had way more in common friend-wise and other things uh, than we realized. So I have 30 cases to sell. Uh, to you know, the North Valley might be a little bit more behind that. Uh, get it where you can. Twenty-seven on the retail. Um, so you might you, Wayne will probably give you it for twenty-five. I'm thinking because he's pretty aggressive. So stay tuned at the end of the show. All this is for sale. This is this is hot. Get it while it's hot. It's get nice. it before it's gone. It's, it's nice to see a brand as you build a brand, and you know, four barrels not <clears> much. Um, another thing, you know, the young guns are from Walla Walla. Love those guys as well, Jesse Basil and, and, and company. And um, also right here in Portland with um, the Guild, and that's you know Patrick Taylor and Ann and, and, uh, Ann and her, her group. Uh, great stuff, guys. You know, it's fun to be a part of all this stuff. Oh yeah, nice cork. Yeah, don't try to corkscrew this yeah. guy. This pops right out. Little well, uh, glass. Engineered. Glass with a little uh, plastic grommet. And, you know, this is a spin back to uh, way, way back years ago when they would use beveled glass as a closure in wine, um, but th they would use wax to seal the wine. Now they've done this really super classy package. Yeah, so, yeah this is um, it's, it's a nice alternative to the screw tap, screw 
cap and it, it's the resealable bottles, but they're nice. They're easily, you can recycle the whole package. It's nice to put it in your dumpster and, and go with that. This is a delicious wine. Yeah, this one's nice. I mean, really just nice, Good soft, cans. supple, you know, that follow through on the finish. It just has, has several layers going on I there. See a little bit behind you. Very, very right. heavy. Let's go. Let's Stop go. talking Boyd's so Boyd's wine next. Boyd Teen Garden from Natalie's Estate. This is his uh, alternate second label, Rock Horse Ranch. Um, this is something that Boyd started doing uh, to give you an entry level. Uh, the Rock Horse Ranch, uh, we'll see a Chardonnay, uh, we'll see a Merlot, a Cabernet, and this is Stable 39, which is uh, always a little bit of a blend of uh, what's left over. Now, Boyd started uh, making wine with David O'Reilly from uh, uh, Excellers, uh, Ex Umbris and all these guys, and uh, Peter Rosbeck from Shenan. So you know those names if you're in the wine world at all. Uh, when he went out on his Thanks own, he, um, yeah, Owen Rowe, <laughs> it's all right. you know, you know, been drinking all afternoon. <laughs> and we're not done yet, no, we're not. Um, planted okay. his first, vi his, his own vineyard in 99 on Chehala Mountain, it's a little three acre estate, uh, all Pinot Noir, namesake of his daughter, who's 12 years old, Natalie, Natalie's estate, but he gets fruit sources from the same place as Peter and David have been getting fruit, so, you know, to greater degree, this, uh, portions of this wine come from Elephant Mountain up around Yakima and uh, the Dalles Vineyard. Well, Boyd's under the radar. You know, he, he's, he's an ex uh, um, Gallo guy. Yeah. He worked, worked at Gallo for quite a while. And he's very unassuming. He's got a beautiful home, and you actually taste right there next to his house. But that is great. He's not open all the time. He's off the North Valley Road, kind of near Bidon, you know, right, right on that little, little um, uh, street that I take a lot of people on. Uh, he does make a lot of different wines. He's kind of like Peter. It's an but, where he makes a lot of different lots. But you're like 200 cases to 50 cases yeah, on no, some yeah, stuff. Exactly. There's nothing, I mean, there's not much. Uh, 142 cases will come out on the stable 39, and um, you're at 21. This is very barnyardy. What? Barnyard, in a good way. Where'd you have your finger? Barnyardy. I get a little bit. I get a little bit of that. I get a little a, a bit. A little bit. You know, I mean, it, it's a little mushroom. It's a little earthy. A lot of a lot of grape, though. Really, really oh, yeah. intense it's grape, grape flavors. It's a little barnyard. It, let's face it. I'm I'm I'll stand toe to toe with any twenty six dollar wine on your retail. Twenty one bucks for this one. It over delivers. This is a thing that you know. People always say, oh, our wines need to be priced at $42, $62, something like that. We want to kind of set ourselves as such in the market. Well, the way that you really establish yourself in the Oregon market, in my humble opinion, is that you over-deliver for the money. And then people are like, where do I get that wine? I need more. I didn't know you had a humble opinion. Uh, I, I, I knew that. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what, guys? Uh, about 21 22 bucks. So, um... Tim, as always, congratulations on your Thank you very career. much. Very excited. I uh, look forward to seeing everyone out in the Oregon market. And yeah. OregonWineSales.com. Look us up. Follow us on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to bringing the small production to you. My favorite guest right here, guys. All right, man. Rock and roll, brother. I'll meet you for cocktails later. Everybody, thanks a lot for watching. We'll be back.